So, by the sweet will of our Gurudev, we are going on searching for quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amrita in the most sweet Shri Shri Radharas Sudhanidhi. So, last time we came up to just a moment. Today we are with uh, 124 and the last one was here 120. So just to remember and begin where we stopped, I will just go again in this scene from last time. We were in the scene where Brahma Vaichitya was the mood of our Swamini, our Radhika. So this one of the many waves of bhava arising in Sri Radha, Kshane Kshane Utte Premara Taranga Ananta, Jiva Chara Kaha Tara, Pai Beka Anta, Chaitanya Charitamrita. This was the quote last time where we ended. So we heard about the Brahma Vaichitya mood of Radharani. And there's one quote I couldn't mention last time. Ras, the mellow of wonder. So Nagara is immersed in wonder. And now there's a nice quote from Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It's 4 to 12 to 13, where it said, when there is no love, even extraordinary activities cannot cause wonder in a person. But even a drop of the same activities can cause great wonder in the heart of a person who loves. So I thought this is a very wonderful statement we could maybe consider a bit and share on if you have any feelings on that. But be at ease. So we know that even here in this world, when a child is going through the forest and this child has no love in the heart, then it doesn't recognize the love in the nature. It doesn't see the flower as a wonderful, a most astonishing creation of the Lord. He's just going by and don't even recognize. But what if this child has great love in the heart? Then every little thing in the nature is astonishing to him because this child is seeing the love in the creation. Because love is everywhere, as we know, in every atom. 
So it's not new that we can understand that point. If somebody has love in the heart, even the smallest thing can cause astonishment. So what to speak of Radharani and Krishna in their exchange, where they forget even their own personality. Of course, there's great astonishment. So no wonder that Nagara is immersed in an ocean, an ocean of Atbutaras. Not just a little bit. He's drowning. So that's, this was the connection to where we stopped last time. So the next verse I found a quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita is 124. The climax of a special pastime. So we heard already about the oneness in the last verse. That's why I actually uh, came back to that point, because it's connected. So this oneness of Radharani and Mohan is not the oneness a kyan would think. So here is stated in the commentary of Srila Anandadas Babaji, this oneness is not to be compared with the oneness kyanis, those treading the path of wisdom, attain. The oneness meant here is a oneness of loving feelings. Srila Ramananda Roy also said, Naso Ramana Naham Ramani. He is not the lover, and I am not the lady love. It's a quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita Matya Lila 8. Identities are not lost, but the identification with one sex has disappeared. The man acts as a woman, and the woman acts as a man. The maid servant can see that as Rasika takes the leading role. Her beautiful butt like hair is disturbing her hanging before her eyes. So the maidservant quickly enters the conch and lifts these beautiful hairs so that Mahabhav personified can see Krishna again. Blessed is this maidservant. So we can see that everything comes together in their oneness. Radharani forgets herself. And her black hairs are in her face. So whatever she sees is blackish. <laughs> and she's together with this blackish boy. So she's completely absorbed and forgetting herself. She's losing herself. And in this scene, the maidservant comes in and helps. So that's a wonderful climax of a special pastime. 
And Srila Ramananda Roy is saying, Naso Ramana Naham Ramani. He is not the lover and I am not the lady love. So now we can understand more deeply what Ramananda Roy is actually referring to when he says that. So we can understand that actually in the Chaitanya Charit Amrita there's so much Lila Rasa hidden, sometimes just a little bit hidden, sometimes more hidden, but it's full of transcendental rasa. And not just some rasa, it's full of the highest, topmost rasa. So we can understand that the present of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what he wants to give us, is everywhere in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So it's just a question if we can open that great present box and look into the small boxes inside the big box and find all these details. And again we have to dive into that present box of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to see what actually he was giving us. So you're always invited to share your feelings or ask some questions or inspire us all more on that topic as you feel so. So the next quote I found in Shishiradara Sudanidhi from Chaitanya Charamita is in verse number 127. So I was just talking about a big present box. Just imagine you have a present box where you can jump in and you will find so many smaller and bigger present boxes in that big present box and you can even lose yourself in that present box. It's everything for you. What is needed now to open that little boxes and understand them? And also here is a very wonderful hint. The word Amanda Prem Lakshmi mean that Sri Radhika is the goddess of fortune of sweet love. Not not no, not of reverential and respectful love, like the Lakshmi from Vaikuntha Loka. Chaitanya Charit Amrita states, Aishvarya Kyanete, uh, Aishvarya Kyanete Hoi Sankuchita Priti, reverential devotion dims the spontaneous ecstasy of love. So someone who is jumping in that big box of presence and is in Aishwarya, he will not feel free to open up the presence but stay outside and say, oh, what wonderful creation! God gave me, it looks so nice. Just see what wonderful paper. Just see this Schleifen, I don't know, it's in English. 
Everything is looking so nice. So in Aishwarya, we, you will not go there and <laughs> open it. You will stay there completely in awe and reverence. So you cannot open all this presence. That's very sad. But this is actually Aishwarya Bhav or Aishwarya, Aishwarya Kyan is leading to Aishwarya Bhav. But what does that mean actually? What is Aishwarya? Why we stay in Aishwarya? Why is Krishna telling to Arjuna and he's saying, you are my friend. That's why I will tell you the most hidden truth. So why? He was telling everything about all these ways how to perform yoga and get self realized. But now he's telling, forget about all this. Sarvadharma parichaja mamikam sharanambacha. So why? What makes the difference? Actually, I was really thinking a lot of this and searching. And I found from my view, it is like this. If you are giving this Aishvarya bath to others, then you expect the same thing back. That means as long as you are in this Aishvarya, your goal is one day I will be in that position. It's very subtle, but this is actually the background. Because if we see it neutral, we are all one family of Brahma. Yeah, you may say, but God is higher. Why higher? He's just a normal friend. Yes, he's the lover of my Swamini. So it depends from which view you are seeing it and your view, how you want to see it, is actually telling a lot of your hidden motives. So as long as you are in this Aishwarya, you mean to say, you have to take care of me. Give me, give me, give me. So you may meditate on that. At least that is my view. So I don't know if this is, if this has Shastric evidence or not. But that's my feeling, as long as I want to give this Aishwarya to others, I actually want it back one day, one day. It's like when I'm completely in a renunciation. If I'm not in renunciation out of love, that means I'm just renouncing to get more later. Now I renounce, but later on I will have more. Like you put the money in your box and don't spend it. This is also renunciation, isn't it? 
You renounce your sense gratification now. Don't spend it. You put it for later. Then you can have more. So like this. Because it's, if it's not in love, it always has a material motive. So that means without love, you are automatically in Aishwarya. So that's why we should really pray to the source of prema that we can get this prema infused in our heart so that this Aishwarya will go step by step. It doesn't maybe go in one second. It's possible, theoretically. But maybe we don't offer all our habits at once. So at least for that what we offer, it will work out. So try again and again. And if we do not have anything anymore to offer, then we remember the last verse of Vilap Kusumanjali, we just had these days. And there we can see, yes, I offered everything. My whole bunch of flowers I offered to you. I have nothing to give anymore. I have... I'm, I'm, I'm finished. That's it. So now you take me or not. Take me or leave me. But I just want to have the mature, the mature, the flow of your prema through me. Give me that flow so that I can serve you steadily in one only one bath, steadily, I will serve you. So then, it's done. But, but till that day, we should look inside if there are more flowers to offer, more bad habits, more question marks of mixed feelings I offer to Radharani so that she can clear it up. A little bit Aishwarya, a little bit this, a little bit that. Chan Sanjali. We can offer them all these Sanjali bars. Please, Radharani, take it. I want to have stay fixed on one goal, fixed in my Sevaras. And I will not leave it anymore. Because this is my constitutional position. I am at home and I will stay at home. I will not anymore wander around because I have seen everything already now. And if there's something to see in you, then with you. So we can come to that point if we stay on our prayers. And this is what we do actually. What are we doing every morning? To whom are we praying? Which persons are they? Which mantra is for which person? What are we doing every day, every morning, the whole day? Where are we searching for Sharanagati? 
and in which mood. So if we are going on in that way, in one mood, stay fixed again and again. It is very clear that now we have the time of the festival of light. The festival of this lights. For me it's, it's, it's the light which is coming from the two nails of Radharani. That light. It's moving mystically and I want to follow. Rani's steps, the shining of her two nails, are showing us the way. Because where is the shadow going? So for me, this is the festival. We can meditate on her two nails, on her lotus feet and that we are the shadow of that light. So how, how it was possible that we could come actually to that mercy? I was just reading these days a bit in Prabhupada's Lilamrita about his life, what he was doing when he came, just to remember some things very clear. And I was remembered that actually he was giving us the base he was so completely fixed on one goal, just to serve his Gurudev. What made him serve his Gurudev in that completely fixed manner? 1922, he get this This uh, words from his Gurudev that whenever he has money, he should print books, distribute this knowledge all over the world, and maybe also build some temples and install some deities in big countries like New York and so on. So he was completely fixed on that. More than 40 years later, in 1965, he was leaving Brindavan, his home, 69 years, one day before his 70th birthday, actually. He left from Kolkata, going to Manhattan. So actually he was leaving everything, his whole shelter. Who would do that? Who would be, sorry for that, but so crazy to leave Brindavan and go in the Mletcher cities Prabhupada had this view that this was the wish of his Gurudev. And he, he was living for that, only for that. There was no other wish anymore. He was only living for that wish. And his father was praying that he one day will become a good Radhadasi. And that wish it was granted. So Prabhupada went to give, like he was ordered by his guru, 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy to every town and village in the form of transcendental literature and the chanting, the congregational chanting of Hare Krishna. So Prabhupada did it. And if you read his story, there were so many tons, mountains of hindrance, so much trouble and problems. But he did it. Why? What was moving him like that? Transcendental love, nothing else. This is not possible if you have any other reason. Only Brahma has the power to let you do such things. Only the mercy of Nitai, only the mercy of Gurudev, which is actually giving the mercy of Nitai. Through him, the mercy is coming. So only through that mercy, only through that loving relationship, it was possible in no other way. And he was fully aware, Prabhupada was fully aware of what will happen. I mean, he was fully prepared to take whatever comes. And there was one saying of him I really like. You have to see the things like they are. You have to count on the worst thing to come, but to hope for the best. In this way, you are always in a very sure position. You count on the worst thing, but you hope for the best and you work for the best. This way, you always win. It's very clever. So he was prepared, prepared for the worst. He was even prepared if there would be no other thing to eat, he would even eat meat. He was telling this one time to one disciple who was going to preach in uh, Russia. And he asked him, what if there's nothing else? Then Prabhupada said, we are not vegetarian. We are distributing the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is our mission. We are prepared to do whatever is necessary. So, of course, in America, he wouldn't have to eat anything like that. He was showing prasadam to all the others. Wonderful story. But actually, this is reminding me, without the connection, without this brema, it wouldn't be possible. He would have given up at one point. So this is the power we should connect to. And actually we have all this information, all the books, and we have the mood of Chaitanya in that book of Chaitanya Charitamrita. So if we are driving on that force, like a server on the wave, the big wave of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy is still moving and flooding the whole universe. So if we serve with that, we are in the most safe position. So no Aishwarya can bring you so far. And this is what, what we can see practically. 
Actually, it's very logical. If you want to reach a goal and you are not prepared to give everything for that, how you want to reach the goal? But if you are prepared to give everything, even your life, for that goal, out of love, then you will reach it. It even has a very logical point. So the next quote of Chaitanya Amrita I found in verse 131. So it's about Audarya. And we have heard that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should be in that Audarya mood. What does it mean, actually? So in Vidakta Madhava, Act 2, there's description of the limit of the natural beauty. So who is that limit of the natural beauty? The form of Radha. So Sri Radha, Sri Radha's form is thus the limit of natural beauty. The Lord's human like pastimes in Braj are supreme in beauty and flavor, and Sri Radhika's law for him is the highest love in Braj. Sri Rata is the topmost limit of generosity, Audarya. The topmost limit of generosity. And in the same time, Sri Rata is the topmost limit of motherly love for us, her maidservants. She is the topmost limit of motherly love for her maidservants. So this has nothing to do with the elderly rasa. It's her motherly love for her servants. It's included. It's always there. And she is the topmost limit. So could we feel safe? Yes, we could, if we would be aware of that, isn't it? And that's the point, how to be aware of that. In bodily consciousness, not possible, because then you aren't the baby of her. You are the baby of her if you are in your form. I am your little maidservant. I'm your little baby. I just learn. I want to take your breast milk. Like Gurudev always saying like this. Why he is saying like this? Then we go into our form. This is not possible in the material form. Because it doesn't fit not possible to meditate on that 
not in Aishwarya and not on the bodily platform. Only in our Sitadeha. Our eternal body which is made of bhav. Bhav, not knowledge. Bhav, feeling, spiritual feeling. This baby has to grow. This bhava deha has to grow with the milk of Mahabhav from our Swamini. Jai Ho, I see. <laughs> Gurudev, maybe you want to inspire us more on that point. Yeah. So that's Radha. She's our Darya. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also our Darya. She's bringing us that. Guru, if we cannot hear you, maybe you said something? No? Ah, okay, you want to listen. So Srila Rupa Goswami defines the word Audarya as follows in Bhakti Ras Amrita Sindhu 2.1.269. Audarya is that generosity that causes one even to give oneself away. Atmanivedanam. It causes someone to even give oneself away. And this is connected actually with the mood of Radharani's Brahma Vaichitya. She is giving herself away, literally. She is forgetting who she is in love completely. She is giving herself to the utmost limit. Now she is not any more Radha. She feels like Krishna because she is completely absorbed to please him. The hairs are hanging in her front. She sees black, she feels black, everything is black. She is completely lost. She was giving herself completely to her beloved. Srimati is love personified. So if she gives herself away to her devotees, she gives herself away to her devotees. We may have thought, yes, she is giving herself away to her beloved, but she is also giving herself away to her devotees. Otherwise, how the Kinkari could feel everything she feels, everything, not even the slightest thing hidden. She is giving herself completely completely and this is actually what is the last prayer of Vilap Kusumanjali about Raghunadas wants to be in that stream where she is giving herself completely and he wants to serve her according, accordingly to that mood. Mature, he is saying. Yes, that's mature. 
like a stream, like the Yamuna, flooding everything. She gives them the highest prema. So a gopi may come up to Mahabhav, but she cannot, she cannot have the highest form of prema. Only the mandaris, only the kinkaris can have this highest form of Mahabhav. Madanakya Mahabhav or Mohanakya Mahabhav when she's not with him. And these are the highest forms of Prema, of Mahabhav. And she is giving that. So she is giving herself completely. She is not hiding anything. She is not like, yes, you may have a lot, but this is just for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> she is giving everything. Sriman Mahaprabhu accepted her mood and her complexion and distributed that, that highest love of God to everyone without even considering who is a friend and who is an enemy. He gave Brahma even to dull and inert creatures like trees and vines. So who can be more generous? This is our Darya. So now we have a very nice picture of what is our Darya. Sri Radha is also the pinnacle of motherly love for all of her maidservants. She is always subdued by the love of her girlfriends and her maidservants. In short, Yara Gunaga Nera Krishna Napana Para Taraguna Ganipe Kemone Shiva Chara. Even if Krishna cannot count Radha's divine qualities, so when even Krishna cannot count Radha's divine qualities, then how can an insignificant living entity do it? Chaitanya Charitamrita. So even the supreme, so-called supreme Lord cannot count, he cannot fully count the qualities of Radha. How should we Even Krishna is giving up to understand the love of Radha. He wants to feel it. That's why he's coming. That's why he's coming as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He cannot understand. 
with all his unlimited qualities, he cannot grab that kind of love. So useless for us to try. Completely useless. So we should better take all our power to jump in that stream of her Mahabhav. And this we can only do by the mercy given by our Gurudev, Sita Deha. Jump into it. Feel it. Don't try to understand. It's not possible. Even Krishna cannot understand. How should we? We should jump into the feelings and dive. Dive in that Mahabhav. And this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually did. A big wave, the biggest tsunami ever, is just flooding. All creatures, even dump creatures, not moving creatures, not only human beings, all souls are flooded by that tsunami, the tsunami of the Prema, the Prema Vajchitya of Swamini, the Audarya of Swamini. She is giving herself to us. So shouldn't we at least be open? And be open doesn't mean understand. Be open means try to feel it. Go inside. Dive into it. Try to understand through the senses of Guru Mandri and of the other Mandris which actually have that savor to give us these feelings. It's their savor. It's not that we have to ask them if we could get it. They want to give it to us. That's their seva. Why should Srila Prabhupada and Saraswati write such a book to be famous? <laughs> to earn money? He's so far away from that we cannot believe. That is his seva, like Prabhupada was going to America, because this was his seva, instruction given by his Guru Mandri. And he was following. And look what turned out. So what will turn out if we just Take the mercy of that great souls which have this seva from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself that they should give us the feelings of Mandaris and Mandari Bhav. First handed to us from Gurudev. So open your heart for the mandraries and then the small little baby gets milk and then the small little baby grows more and more and then is serving Swamini like the prayer the last prayer of all Raghunadas. So everything begins 
and everything ends with the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If he wouldn't be there, there would be no parampara who could give that present to us. They would all stand there empty-handed or just up to go be bath. There would be Uchvalaras, but no Unat Uchvalaras. Where Radharani, in her Audarya, in her generosity, is giving herself not only to her beloved, but also to us. So what a happy day, happy day. Oh, what a happy day, happy day. When Chaitanya came <laughs> and flooded everything with our Daurya Prim. What a happy day, isn't it? Jai Ho, Jai Shri Radhe. This is Radharani's generosity, brought by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So if you want to comment or share your feelings or correct me or whatever, just do so, please. Please, Gopinath also come. Very nice you said about Arya. Can you repeat it? Very nice. And quotation from you, that also mentioned, from uh, Vedak the mother. Beautiful, beautiful. First time I listened to that. This is the mercy of Gurudev. He's telling first time he listened that, but actually he spoke through my mouth. So, but anyway, it's a loving game between us. So, let's have a nice game of love. So, Sri Radha's form is thus the limit of natural beauty. We had this, this connection that Radharani is in Brahma Vaichitya. And in this state of mind, in this state of Brahma, that she is giving herself the black hair hanging before her face, completely absorbed in the blackish boy, so forgetting herself completely, not understanding anymore who she is. In this moment, there is coming the small servant inside and putting her hair straight again and serving her according to her mood. So this was the connection of Sri Radha's form is thus the limit of natural beauty, the limit in that moment. And exactly in this mood of topmost generosity, Audaya, what means topmost limit of generosity and there's a plus. Motherly love for her maidservants. She is losing herself 
and giving herself completely to her beloved. But in the same time, she is asking silently for Seva. She is giving Seva Ras to her kinkari. So in that moment, she is giving herself also to her kinkari completely, without any restriction. She is not holding back a tinge. So this is her Audaya. This is her generosity. She is giving herself completely to her beloved, but also to us. When we serve her, she is giving everything completely to us. And this is actually what Raghunadas Goswami is asking for in the last verse of Vilap Kusumanjali. He had given all flowers, all offerings, but now he's just saying, okay, you can take me or you can leave me. That's it. I have nothing more to say. I want to be in that stream of our Darya constantly in stai. Because we cannot be so generous without Radharani's generosity. Only if she is giving us that generosity, we are part of her generosity. And then we are completely fixed. Srila Raghunath is saying mature. He wants to have mature seva. That means no way out anymore. So her Audarya is actually the driving force for our seva. And this is brought here in this world by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is his present, his present box. Like I said in the beginning, it's a present box so big that you can jump in and there are so many other present boxes smaller and bigger inside. And if you stand there in Aishwarya, you will never get the presents. But if you just rip the paper off and jump into every little box, then you are in the ocean, in an ocean of Radha's Audarya. And you will never, never, ever come out again. That's our home. This is where we want to be. This is our constitutional position. We are living on Rata's generosity. We are living on that driving force, her Audaya. But now I'm really interested what our Gopinath will share with us on this topic. He's always hiding. Where is going to? Someone just came and he had to go and see. So then you have to take his place first, huh? I want to hear from you, my dear. It's very beautiful. Yeah. 
What happened to Vrindavan? Why are you all so miseries now? You don't share with us. We have to get the nectar from you. You are living in Vrindavan. Please share something with us. Ah, here he is. <laughs> so Gopinath, please give us some drops of the honey which are dripping from Radharani's lotus feet. Okay, I have no choice. Um, my beloved God brother is saying my name. So first of all, I'm I was very thankful to you, Goravani. Um, you have really um, such a beautiful way of uh, sharing and narrating and a very, very lovely, soothing voice. And I really like to listen to you. Unfortunately, I don't get often the chance these days to listen to, to you. But whenever I hear your voice, it's very soothing. Thank you for that. And, um, what what just came to me is that recently I understood that actually I don't know nothing about this path. Um, everything I thought I know or I understood turned out to be, uh, yeah, a misconception of my own. The one thing living here in Vrindavan, you were saying like, what you live in Vrindavan, you understand that everything is only mercy. There's nothing else. Everything I want to acquire or I think I am, it's just an illusion. It's really a, we are Kripa Patra. So everything is given to us by the mercy of Radharani and her expansions, which is Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas who are really sincerely practicing and have a sincere connection to her and to Gurudev. So we should seek the association of those who are more sincere and very dear and close. Um, I just understood that I'm only, only living on the fringe and um, aspiring maybe to come a bit closer in this lifetime, but it seems it's not my, uh, my own endeavor. It's really something which I have to try to understand that I have to receive it first before I can move not move first and then think I will receive it and first have to be like close enough in the heart with Gurudev that whatever he infuses in me, I really properly can receive and not, not only on the surface as I've been swimming for a long time. So, so this is what I understood from my own experience. But very happy that uh, you know what you were sharing now about Audharia. It uh, feels very good to hear it from your voice. Thank you. Kupinad is really in a, in such an example of humble mood, just serving all the time there, Brother Rani. Thank you for your mood and I hope you are merciful and give me also some percentage at least lean it to me for some time that I can get some some idea of what it is or if you have enough maybe give me something <laughs> unfortunately we never have enough I know thank you so much for sharing your feelings. It's really, it's going in the heart. I can feel you. And I think the others can also, they can feel you. So please bless us that we can serve in a similar way. It's such an important point actually you made that whatever we endeavor, whatever we think, we understood 
in the end, it's useless. <laughs> if the stream of our Darya is not hitting us, not flooding us, it's useless. Because this path we can only go with this stream, we can only dive in and not just swim on it, really dive in and get lost in it. So and only if we just l put ourselves inside and leave us there, then things will come up by the time and they will be just there. We cannot do anything that they come. We cannot work artificially on it. So, Gopinath is telling a very wonderful point here. And that's why actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, because he knows perfectly, isn't it? Radharani knows perfectly, we are lost without her mercy. Which baby is not lost without the mercy of the mother? <laughs> so we are in this position, little, small babies, hoping to be mandres. We need the mercy and the milk of the mother. And this is giving us so much hope because here it's written, this Audaria is here. This is the milk, the creamy, thick milk. It's giving us whatever we need. We don't need to understand. Does a baby to understand anything or just suck on the breast? And if he doesn't know where it is, will not the mother show? For me, it's so relaxing to know that only mercy can bring us there. Because I know I have no quality, so it's impossible. For me, it's impossible. No way. But is Radharani's mercy limited? Her Audaya is flooding everything. So, by her loving force, we will be thrown to her lotus feet automatically. It's like you make this thing out of the bathtub. Whatever is in the bathtub will come now to this, isn't it? to this little opening. So the whole our Darya will bring us to her lotus feet. And the little lights we offer, we may offer to her shining food nails where these lights are coming from and offer ourselves to be one day a shadow of this wonderful lotus feet. So Sri Radha, the very form of pure loving pastimes. So Radha is sweetness and love in person. 
and she is generous. So in in the commentary here, Ananda Das Babaji is writing, finally the blessed author says, whose only prowess is the ability to carry the great stream of the essence of great sweetness that is Shri Krishna's play. Shri Vachendanandana is the personification of sweetness. Madhuryam Evanu Lila Shukha Madhurya Bhagavat Sara Bracha Koilo Paracha. And this is another quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. The essence of Godhead is sweetness and is shown only in Braj. Vachendranandana has some extraordinary attributes that nourish Rasa and that cannot be found in any other person, in any other personality of Godhead. So why is that so? Why they are only shown in Braj? There's a very simple answer to that. All his good qualities come forth from one person. And this is Radha. So only if he is with Radha, he can show his best qualities. That's why his sweetness can only be shown in Raj, because Radharani is only in Raj. So only with Radha, he is that sweet. But the generosity of Radharani is always there. With him or without him. Isn't that amazing? So Krishna is the greatest person and the original Supreme Lord. He is the proprietor of Brindavan Dham, where the soil consists of thought gems, and the abodes are made of jewels. The maid servants wear foot ornaments made of thawed gems, and the whole forest is naturally endowed with wish yielding vines and trees. However, no one asks for anything but flowers and fruits from these trees and vines. Innumerable wish yielding cows graze in each forest, but no one asks for anything else but milk from them. Chaitanya Charit Amita Matya Lila 14. So that's an interesting point, isn't it? The maidservants were food ornaments 
made of thought gems. A thought gem. So the thought of the mandaris are building gems. The thoughts of the mandaris and kinkris are so pure. They consist of the highest possible love in Sivaras. And these are the gems lying around in Raj. Isn't that amazing? And the whole forest is naturally endowed with wish-yielding vines and trees. Wish-yielding vines and trees. So you may go there. I heard one example actually from... Oh, from whom I heard. Anyway, first we hear the example. A manjari wants to give a new outfit to Radharani in the morning after her love battle. And she's going outside of the Nikunja to a nearby desire vine and asking for a new outfit. And then, like a fruit, it's hanging there. And she's pulling out, out of this fruit, the new dress for Radha. Everything is inside what she needs. So, all The whole Vrindavan is working together, the whole branch, for one point. To serve the Lilas of Radha and her beloved perfectly. And they all work together perfectly. Everyone has his seva. How wonderful! The wish-yielding trees and the wish-yielding wines are there to fulfill whatever is needed for the personal seva of Radharani and her beloved. And the cows if the mandri wants to prepare something for Swamini, she can go to the cow and ask for milk and then prepare something. Although the cow could get, she could actually give everything. Wish yielding means whatever you wish. The mandaris are so pure in their consciousness. They have no requirements if they are not for their seva. Completely in sevaras. Even the wind knows that it increases the yugala's enjoyment by carrying the refreshing drops of the Yamuna water. And thus feels very happy and satisfied. So even the wind is serving In a blissful grove, in blissful Vrindavan, 
there is an enchanting jeweled temple wherein Rai Kanu, Radha and Mohan, the wonderful adolescent couple that is great Rasa personified, dwell. This couple that are like the monars of Rasa are absorbed in the pinnacle of ecstatic Rasa as they reveal their wonderful artistic endeavors during their amorous battle. Artistic, it's artistic endeavors in their love play. It's not just some love play, it's artistic. Every little, every little movement is artistic. Host of bumblebees sweetly buzz in the Rasika Kunja as if they sing about this Rasika game. And they witness this festival. The soft breeze serves the couple by carrying refreshing drops of Yamuna water inside the cottage. is like a stone around the neck. So what is that boy without Radha? And what are we without Radha? So we need that Audarya. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give it to us. And if we take it, then something will happen. Atarera kuna iha sop sancharilo. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. So they drink the nectar of lips and by the Audarya of Radha we can also drink the nectar of her lips as we heard in Shri Vilap Kusumanjali by the example and Radha is calling to Lassi and giving her from mouth to mouth the jeweled battle leaves, kissing her.
Shri Shri Radha Madhava's delicious service. In that connection, actually, this quote is here from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Atareyara guna iha sob sancharilo. Verse number 135 of Radharas Sudhaniti. So in this example, it's first the quote, and now comes the story. Because I wanted to end, actually, then with this Leela. Sri Yugala is now tired of lovemaking, and the maidservant enters the Kunja to begin her service. The loving couple sits up in the bed, breathing deeply, their bodies moist with perspiration. The maid servant starts fanning them with a palm leaf fan, wanting to remove their fatigue by causing their bodily fragrance to enter into each other's nostrils. So that's an interesting point. Taking the fatigue by causing their bodily fragrance to enter into each other's nostrils. That's the way to take the fatigue. Sometimes she fans in such a way that Sri Radhika's scarf slips off slightly, making her Nagara very eager to enjoy her again. Blessed is this maidservant that she can make Krishna always relish Sri Radhika's sweet form and fragrance simply by fanning her. The sweat drops of the loving couple have now dried up, so the maid servant wipes their faces with a cloth trenched, uh, trenched in scented water and serves them water mixed with delicious camphor susvadu ampamritam means delicious nectar water water is also called nectar why then is there a separate mentioning of the word nectar required Srimati hands Shyam Sundara the class with camphor syrup and Shyam Sundara takes it, relishing its fragrance that was caused by the scent of Priyachi's lotus-like mouth. <laughs> when Srimati sees this, she smiles slightly making nectar that is millions of times more delicious than the camphor syrup trickle from her mouth. Shyam takes that nectar with the cups of his lips. Means he kisses her. Srimati casts a loving glance at Shyam's face, takes the glass from his hands and personally makes Shyam drink the syrup, which is mixed with nectar. Srimati closes her eyes out of ecstasy. Sripad does not know 
whether Srimati relishes the nectarian drink or whether she directly relishes the taste of Krishna's lips. Since all the qualities of his lips have been infused in the drink. Atarera guna ihasop sancharila. And in the same way, all the good qualities of our Swamini are in the better leaves when she gives it directly from her mouth into our. This is only possible by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is his Audarya Lila. Nitai Gaura Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Nitai Gaura Hari Bol, Nitai Gaura Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Nitai Gaura Hari Bol, Jai Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Jai Shri Radhe, Jai Jai Shri Radhe. Hey.